That's all. We're there. We are on. Thank you, Brandon. Brandon's not only floor manager, but coffee boy tonight. Thank you very much, sir. All right, here we go. Second edition of Sweet and Sour for the year. And your letters tonight are these. And they tell me I have to look over there now. OK? Are we there? There you go. We are now. First letter tonight. Is it, is it normal to start viewing your husband as others probably see him? Well, how do you know how the others see him? What does that mean? It means she's losing interest, which is why she's writing in. Second letter tonight. You know, indignation. We get a lot of this. How dare this person be so arrogant and so undermining of our democracy uh, to think that she deserves the right to act so destructively to our community. Who are we talking about? Sally McManus, she said she can break whatever law she wants if she disagrees with it. Yeah, a lot of people unnerved by that sort of comment. Final letter tonight, we met in preschool, lovely. Stayed together all the way through uni, lovely. And into our careers, lovely. Now there's a bitch fight on. Yep, they've been together forever and they slated one another and she wants to know if they can make amends. All these and a terrific lot of panellists coming up very shortly. Don't go away, sweet and sour, right now. See you in a minute. I'm going to have my coffee. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby, it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. Gary Mitchell with you for the next fun-filled half hour. Well, fun-filled? I've had a look at some of the letters. So have your panellists who are going to chew them up. First up tonight, my mate who we haven't seen for absolutely ages. Hello, Lewis. Oh. How are you, sir? Not bad. I was here. Nice to have you here. Oh, thank you very much. Where have you been? I was here not so long ago, Geese. It's you that wasn't here. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. I've been away a little bit and we had the break in between as well. Are you well? Uh, I reckon I've aged about 10 years Why? in the last year and a half. Why? Because if Two year olds do that to you? Well, if you stop. Or well, that too, but you know, once you stop doing everything that you're doing, then you just... Oh, you yeah. Yeah. You do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know it. First timer on the show, world champion, WBO, what's World Boxing Organisation, our Hello. little world champion. Hello, Bang Bang. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Welcome to the panel. Thank you. I'm not going to ask you how you are, because you look amazing. Oh, you can come back. We haven't even done the show yet. Always happy. Yeah, oh, right, I'm booking you permanently for the year. That's, that's terrific. When did you become world champion? Uh, August last year. Wow. Yeah. And what's what's life been like since you've become the world champion? Uh, it's been relatively similar. Still sweating oh, really? away in the gym and um, yeah, trying to make ground. How threatening are you on the street if you know some, oh, some thug looks like walking? I probably you smile at him. Okay. Yeah, I'm a lover, not a fighter. But. Oh, except when it if counts. The job and needs to get done, it needs to get done. Did they give you a big buckle? Yes. They did? Yes. You nice got anyone to frame it for you yet? Because I know the bloke, he might have a shop that does that sort of okay, thing. Okay, yeah. Alright, okay. Also, first time on the show, communications expert. Are we allowed to call you that? Yeah, yeah, you can call me whatever. Hello, Jimma. Hello. I'm yeah. popping my sweet and my sour cherry tonight. <laughs> <laughs> are we allowed to tell everybody whose daughter you are? Sure. Do you want to tell him or will I? You, oh, no, you go Our ahead. mate Bid, who's actually sitting in our audience tonight over mm -hmm. there, we might get a quiet camera shot of, of him a bit, bit later, he's, he's, uh, he's brought in our beautiful Gemma. <laughs> yeah, I'm here against my will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Communications expert, what makes you that? Um, well, my official title is actually Innovation Consultant, but it sounds really wanky at parties. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I reformed it into communications experts. Okay. Yeah. You can do a lot of work for us. As yeah. Well. Sounds good. Good to have you here. Thank you. Our mate Jono's back. Hello, sir. Man about town. Yeah, I've been burning the candle at both ends. You always do. I've, I've known you to do been anything. Going but. out every night, working hard during the day, going to the gym in the morning, going to International Women's Day, being an ambassador. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's just been tiring. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted. You were also telling us that you also 
scrutinise every new song that hits the radio waves as well. Are we, are we allowed to say that anymore? Radio waves? What do we say? You don't listen to the radio, the internet, you download them. Apple the iTunes. Internet. I do it lawfully, of course, <laughs> and I listen to every song pretty much that comes out because I love my music. Wow. Just love it. And I take my music to other people's houses and I inflict it on them. Oh, they have you, to listen to my They playlist. go, here he comes again, he's bringing his own stuff. <laughs> oh man, you ready to do some work? Here we go, folks. Dear Sweet and Sour, is it normal to start viewing your husband as others probably see him? We've been married for 21 years and have just worked out he's no longer remotely attractive. I don't know why that's just dawned on me, to, uh, to be honest, and it's worrying me silly because I really don't want to go anywhere near the man I built my life with. We have 19-year-old twin boys who have moved out and house share with four other friends while they're studying at uni. Well, Bob, my hubby, is now in my face a lot more, and that's OK because I'm used to having him uh, aggravate me over the years, but now I have to counsel myself from jumping down his throat because even what he says is seeming awfully unattractive to me. My boys would always joke with me that I married a slob, their dad, and I would always have a laugh and let them know that he's always been a good man and the love of my life for better or worse. Yet after 21 years, I'm looking at him for the worse with utter revulsion. What a terrible thing to say. Oh. Is this normal? Do all couples go through this? Have we hit a relationship wall that we can't get beyond? I'm feeling very unsure of my future at the moment. I can't bring myself to sleep in the same bed with him. It's not getting better. What happened to us? Wrote Holly of Broadmeadows in Victoria. Well, living there, that'd probably do it to you anyway. John Ope, some advice here for poor old Holly. Well, firstly, the situation is absolutely dire. Dire? I've got a dire. It's dire, absolutely dire. I've got a good friend who's a marriage counsellor, so I took this problem to her today. Oh, I'm good at delegating. Very smart. And That's this lady, research. I'll name her, her name's Sophie Pedersen, and she said to me, what they can do is undergo marathon marriage counselling. Marathon? Where you can sit with you have for to do it 18 in hours, <laughs> six hours per day, three days in a row, and work out what's really wrong in your relationship. After that, it's really heavy. After that amount of time, hours. I reckon she'd really be sick of him. After that time, you finally decide whether you want to be with each other or you just walk the plank. Wow. Yeah. Marathon but, counselling. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's quite an ordeal, I believe, but I'm assured by this very esteemed marriage counsellor that it works. OK, we've got to get her on the show yeah. too. Yeah. Gemma, what's going on here? Um, well, firstly, I just wanted to say I'm really disappointed this letter isn't called Bob the Slob because I think that actually has a really good ring to it. But um, look, 21 years, that's a pretty good innings. Um, my dad, who's in the audience, um, he's been married four times and he always says, why commit for life when you only get 20 for murder? So, Shaft it again, Bib. I think, uh, you know, if, if Bob's about 50, why don't you just change him and get 225s? <laughs> I think, um, look, I don't think, I don't think it's Bob's slobness uh, that's annoying her. I think it's actually just Bobness that's Bob annoying her. Bobness. He's, by all accounts, the boys said he was always a slob. Um, I think it's probably the boys have moved out and, and, and now there's no He's buffer. He's in your face. Bang, bang. Shame. Well, I really feel sorry for Bob in this situation. Mm -hmm. yeah, he probably hasn't changed or anything. Um, I'd say it's a pretty common thing when you're married to go through this. Um, and it, and they you know, happens earlier than 21 years yeah, as well. Yeah, it does. You know, you know seven seven 13, rich, 15 years. Seven, seven years. Rich. Seven year rich. Seven That's years. the you've, one. <laughs> you've done three times the seven year rich. Yeah, so, I mean, I'd say that uh, the boys moving out, it'd probably be, you know, a big void, a big void in the gap. So she's got to probably look at herself and look at her husband and see what she can uh, Your fault, uncover. Honey within herself, there might be something exciting there to, um, you know, yeah. spin on the marriage. But, you know, if all else fails, you could always end up with a woman. Oh, <laughs> save that bit for the last one. <laughs> Lewis, last word to a man. All right, well, I reckon that Bob's, like, mega happy. He's got rid of the kids, <laughs> <laughs> right? The wife. Hey, honey, what are we doing? The wife's like to see you leaving him alone. Bob's like, yeah, man, bang on. <laughs> but seriously, though, um, once you hit the black hole stage and what he says, it doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter what he says, right? Like, darling, you look lovely today, and you're like, oh. <laughs> then, you know, I don't know it's about gone. the counselling to it. I reckon that's too far. I've been, I've been, I've been the black hole myself, <laughs> and um, doesn't matter what you say, it just he's no good. And if if you're ready to move on, if you're happy, you got the means to. 
to chip then. Do so. I reckon she should chip. That but may well be the. Be I don't want to break anybody. I don't want to be responsible for you. No, know, go for break counseling. Up anything. As John says, go for counseling. Marathon counseling. Marathon counseling. You know, sometimes those things can be fun. <laughs> <laughs> when we can't or. Go for a woman. Oh, yeah. oh, go for pretty a woman. exciting, something new. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to be talking about the res reserving the right to break the law. When we come back, more of Sweet and Sour. Don't go away. See you soon. Getting in touch with Sweet and Sour is easy. Just head to sweetandsour.net.au to send us a letter. And while you're there, why not check out our past episodes? Plus, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And for a behind-the-scenes look at Sweet and Sour, check us out on Instagram. And if you'd like to send us a letter, courtesy, uh, oh, uh, courtesy of the address that you just saw there, we're going to read it out and chat about it. And for everyone that we do read out and discuss, we're going to send you to the movies, courtesy of our beautiful, beautiful Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. Thank you, Nat. She's been with us for years and years and years. I know, because so have I. <laughs> uh, loving is the movie we're sending you to. And here we go, letter two. It's titled Divided We Four. Hi, panellists. I'm incensed. To hear union officials still sounding like the thugs of yesteryear completely offends me. Unions have been responsible for most of the benefits working men and women enjoy today. And I'm the first to advocate for union membership whenever a younger person asks me for some direction on joining their workplace union or not. When union heavyweight Sally McManus publicly proclaimed that she will break any law that she happens to feel unjust, made my stomach turn. How dare this person be so arrogant and so undermining of our democracy to think that she deserves the right to act so destructively in our community. No wonder union membership has dropped to less than 12% of the workforce. Don't get me wrong. I've lived through the 60s and the 70s and I'm the first to acknowledge civil disobedience has been a significant tool for progress. But this comment by McManus to me was a sheer calculated abrasive arrogance. It makes me jerk back to those awful days when the Builders Labourers Federation with Norm Gallagher at its helm was deregistered for, among other things, standover tactics and thuggery. Am I the only person taking offence at this abusive comment uh, of this woman? Seriously, do the panellists feel that these union officials, and for that matter, unions, are relevant to the workforce today? And it's, it comes to, into us from Hubert of Malvern. Of Victoria Lewis, first up to you, sir. Whoa. Union mm -hmm. still relevant? Did mm. you hear these comments? Uh, yeah, well, see, this, I've, I've drifted. I used to be a union representative myself as a younger man in England, and I've drifted away from. You got HR now, you got human rights, and all that. I, I don't know. But um, are they still relevant? They might be in the workforce if you need them. <laughs> the only I was, I was listening to the um, the letter, and the only thing I got from it was jerk. <laughs> So, uh, oh, okay. but Sally McManus, so I did see that on the TV, Sally McManus in an interview. I reckon she's a bit shock jockey, you know what I mean? Maybe, but if Maybe she breaks the law, she's going away. Be... You break the law, you go away. She breaks the law, she's, she's going, going away. So I reckon it's just all tough and tough. Maybe. Hmm. Okay, bang, bang. Ah, uh, well, to be honest, I don't really know too much about the union because I've never had to deal with it. You've never been a union member? Um, no. Isn't no. that amazing? Well, there's the job for your unions. <laughs> you know, Lewis. 50% of the panel already have said he was involved years ago and one I'm of the youngest members of the panel <laughs> doesn't know anything about unions. What are you doing out there? No wonder you're losing Is there a boxing people. union? Uh, oh, there's boxing commissions and things like that, yeah, for sure. But, keep I mean, yeah. you know, Did you I've hear about of, this I've kind of stayed off the track and away from all of this kind of are stuff Are you politically anyway. involved at all? No, I'm not really. No. There you go. That's the challenge. <laughs> I don't need to be, I don't think. I'm uh, focusing on what I need to focus mm -hmm. on, so... That's what life's about. But um, yeah, I don't know. Sally seems to think that um, she's got strong, you know, strong views that she's standing up for. But I don't think that it gives her the right to uh, break the law. Yeah, good on you, Jim. What's your view on this? Did you see it in the news when it happened? Yeah, I did, and I, I, I think the, the, the thing is that a point of a union is obviously to negotiate better rights for workers, and um, I guess how are they going to do that if the workplace, you know, thinks that they're extremists and, and, and basically bullies? So I, I think it's counterproductive to um, her cause. And um, recently, actually on the weekend, a friend of mine said that the comments were made in regards to the CFMEU. And the, my friend said that he had seen the CFMEU, sorry, all with matching t-shirts. And their slogan on the back was, the problem with today's society is that we no longer drink from the skulls of our vanquished foes. 
Now that's pretty oh, damn aggressive. Isn't, so isn't that I, a sexy I mean, slogan? Yeah. <laughs> that would make you want to join up, wouldn't I it? I know. So, I mean, no wonder it's at 12%. Yeah, Jono. Well, I've got some sympathy with the comments that McManus made. Um, there are some laws in our past which have been ridiculous. Um, one is it used to be illegal in Western Australia to be involved in a homosexual relationship. That's now changed. Now, people used to defy those laws and I can understand why. I also think the euthanasia law is one that needs to be tested. And there's going to be people who, doctors for example, who push that law to the limit in an attempt to test it and see if we can't get it changed. So I've got some sim sympathy with McManus and I think unions are a really valuable part of our society. Valuable. We're here because we'll, we'll, we've made this amount Otherwise, of Otherwise little then... boys will still be sent up chimneys uh, to <laughs> yes, clean chimneys. Yeah, 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 yeah. When we come back, we're going to talk about patching up a friendship. They've been mates from primary school, or even before that, all the way through their careers, and now they're screaming and throttling one another. <laughs> when we come back, more of Sweet and Sour. That's what it's really all about. You know that. You know that. <laughs> Look, this might sound a little bit crazy, but... <laughs> Why? I told you it might sound a little bit crazy. Sweet and sour, right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. Here we go, straight into the letter. Oh, sweet and sour, we had a screaming match. I don't even know what it was over, but we said some awful things to each other. Um, that's my used-to-be best friend and me. We haven't spoken for over a month after we had a public spat at our usual <laughs> coffee house. How embarrassing, you did it in public. It was very loud and very embarrassing, but we were both so aggravated and so aggressive towards one another, we forgot we were in public. Oh, God. We met in preschool and we stayed together all the way through uni and into our careers. Over something trivial, and I can't remember what, we went for each other's jugular. She called me manipulative. She called me loose. Well, it was much worse than that. She called me a user. Well, I called her a negative bitch who drags everyone around her down, a self-indulgent, self-wallowing, self-pityer, and worse, a social media whinger who purposely puts those insincere help messages out on Facebook. Don't you hate those people? Drives me nuts too. Oh my God, how do I get through this? Why is it always happening to me? Blah, blah, blah. Well, where to from here, folks? The fact of it is, despite all the acrimony, I miss her. I just figure that genie is out of, the genie is out of the bottle and no matter what overtures I make, as the more confident one of the two of us, it's probably just too late. Is there a way to retrieve the decades of such a strong bond? And it comes to us from Sarah of Balmain in New South Wales. Have you had a falling out like that yet? I sure have. I've had, really? Yeah, I've had several. Not Maybe not in public. You're but, only uh, seven. How could you have had a falling out like that? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Um, look, Sarah, you've called your friend a social media whinger and a walla wallower, but yet you're the one writing into a national television to tell us about it. <laughs> yes. And on top of that, um, you've said that she writes insincere messages asking for help on her social media, but that's exactly what this is. You, in the last paragraph, you say, you know, oh, I'm not going to try to reconcile it because it's not going to work. So how insincere is that? And that's certainly not the attitude. Basically, instead of writing into us, write a heartfelt letter to your friend um, and if you can't be bothered then is there really anything worth mending because um, relationships are a bit like farts and if you have to force it it's probably shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Should have saved that for your outro, that was pretty good. <laughs> Jono, retrievable or not retrievable? Well look, I've been on about marathon, marathon counselling all night. <laughs> And this is, another, this is another case. Is this something you this asked your mate as this, well? No, I didn't ask her this one because she doesn't know everything even though she thinks she does. Um, but this is another case where if you really love your buddy, sit down and talk it through because long relationships like this need to be preserved. And I'm all in favour of trying to get things back on track and being friends again. So get on with it. Stop whinging yeah. to one another or behind each other's back and enjoy the relationship that you had for so long. Yeah, yeah, you can say you're sorry, go and see it. Doesn't matter. Kiss on the lips. Kiss on the lips. Which one? <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. oh, Lewis. Yes, sir. Retrievable? Absolutely. It's normal, yeah, I think so. isn't it? It's, yeah, if, everybody if you've got a has a go. good, close mate, 
that you'd done everything with and you know each other too. You're bound to get pissed off with them like you'd get pissed off with as yourself. As bad as this though, this sounds really bad though. Well, it doesn't matter. Doesn't it's, matter, does it? If it's doesn't true, matter. if they were both telling the truth and you both got it out and you cleared the air yeah, and you're I mates know. and it's been years and you love each other because you miss her and she's wicked and you know <laughs> there might be a chance that you know I might get a little something happening. <laughs> then um, <laughs> go back to her and say, "Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. Mm, beautiful. Sorted." <laughs> but uh, the, you know, look, all of us bump into mates and whatever who have had a falling out and whatever, and we know that. A lot of the time, some of them never actually get back together. Oh, well, see, this is nothing, compared to me and my best friend, we'd kick the shit out of each other, <laughs> and then the next day, there you go, well, not, there you go, it's more like, oh, there you go, no, no, but you know, with, you get over it, you're mates, so get over it. Loose, sorry. Yeah, yeah, get over it, it's yeah, yeah. You it's can just get part, over it. part of it. It depends, part, it depends. Friendship. If you're committed to getting over it, I think you can get over it, part friendship, mate. All right, bang bang. What do you reckon? Sarah, drama, I know what drama, you'd do. drama. What would you'd, I do? You'd just no, go and box. Have you ever? You? Have you ever boxed any of I'm your mates? I'm a lover, not a fighter. Yeah, actually. You, you're a lover, and you've taken yeah. up boxing, and you're the world champion. That's why, because I love it. <laughs> okay. No, Sarah, it sounds like drama, drama, drama to me. Really, if you love it, if you well, that word's not in there, but you say you miss her, so just let go of the ego, say sorry, and uh, kiss and make up. Mm -hmm. Kiss and make up. Oh, okay. What happens if? The other girl doesn't actually want to have well, a bar. That would be funny, wouldn't it? She'd be doing these ones like John. Oh yeah, <laughs> she doesn't want to kiss and make up. Mm. Don't forget the counselling. Don't yes, forget see? the counselling. John says, don't forget the counselling. Which letter do you like to give away the pair of limited edition uh, Sundays courtesy of Alon Trees and Aussie Opticals? Do you like this I letter? Think, or do you no, like think, another one? No, I like Bob. Poor Bob. Bob. Bob, Bob, letter yes, one. Yes, but I think, you know. Letter one? Yeah, letter one. Holly letter can one. put them on Bob to make Bob look amazing. Bob's not actually the letter writer. His wife is. No, Holly exactly. of Broad Venice. So Holly uh, needs to put him on Bob, and then he's going to look so dope that she'll be like, wow, you're so attractive. Those there glasses you go. are rad. <laughs> you're, you're, or at least part of him will be you're covered. You're yeah. up your Or oh, she could put them a on and yeah, pretend mm. to not look mm. at anything. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, the rest of the panel, do we agree? Or do I, 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 well, whatever she just said, man, I don't want to kick my ass and shit. You know what I'm saying? She makes a good case. She makes yeah. a good case, all right. Yeah. Three, we need to convince well, one more. It was number one for me. It was num oh, See, number one, number okay. One all the way. Yeah. Universal yeah. on the panel, that's it. Coming out number to one. Holly of Broad Meadows. They're not for you, <laughs> they're for Bob, okay? <laughs> and if you don't give them to Bob, we're sending around a little bang bang here to make sure you do, okay? Lewis, lovely to have you on oh, the my show, sir. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Always, always good. Me. When are we going to see you next? Uh, I'll do we have to skip Mondays? Or yeah, do we, we still have to skip Mondays? No, or? no, no, he's all right. I suppose I can sort it out. Just give me a bell and I'll see what I can do, Gov. Do you know what I mean? All right, lovely. If you're not on, we're going to send Bang Bang around. Actually, we could use you as a henchman. <laughs> we can make sure we send you around to all the people that we... Make them come don't, in. Don't behave. Force. Yeah. Like, did you okay. enjoy yourself tonight? Yeah, I did. I had a good time. Right. She was Come making back. me laugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jim was making everybody laugh. Did you make your dad laugh, do you reckon? Oh, most of it was at his expense, so probably <laughs> not. <laughs> Good training, I reckon. Jono, score out of 10 for tonight's panel. Look, it was 9 out of 10 because as I look across the panel, you all have absolutely beautiful smiles. Oh! oh. Gary, Gary, I don't necessarily want to kiss you or Lewis. <laughs> so that might be happy. <laughs> he said not necessarily. Not necessarily. <laughs> what if I got the money? Yeah. <laughs> thank all of our wonderful panellists. Thank all of our terrific crew uh, here at Central. And thanks for having us at home, Australia. Goodbye, everyone. See you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fun show tonight.